All right, you guys. Did a nice video the other day with some games that people had submitted to me with nice attacking ideas going on. I just played a bunch of uh, Blitz games this morning, five-minute Blitz games, and I've picked out five that have got good attacking kind of uh, ideas in them. So, yeah, I just thought we'd, we'd go through this, really with this, this focus on front foot attacking chess, keeping the initiative, keeping your opponent having to um, defend and respond to your ideas. So we'll go through fairly quickly. Okay, so all of these five five-minute blitz games and all wins for me. So the first one is the Karo Khan, fantasy variation. Okay, not really a big fan of this move. It's blocking in his bishop. Um, and one idea here is to push e5 and take this square away from the knight. I bring up my bishop here, and now I hit the knight, okay? So, you know, rather than allowing... So, rather than moving there and preventing that move, an alternative is always to allow the knight to develop and then hit it, right? And then it kicks away. Now, this knight, it has to be said, doesn't have an awful lot of squares available to it, okay? So that's the first thing I noticed. Um, so, in fact, I think maybe... G4 here would have actually trapped and won the knight. But I play knight e2, and now his queen comes out with check. But I have g3, so it's all right. Uh, queen retreats, and now I develop my bishop. I think still again, um, this is still playable. However, I wanted to be, you know, maybe a slight worry about the queen then coming in behind my pawn, right? So maybe put the bishop here in order to play bishop f2 in that instance. Now it seems as though black may have figured out the threat. I deliver g4 anyway and force the knight backwards, okay? So now I've got a nice lead in development here and I've also got quite good space. I've got four pawns at the board, I've got one in my opponent's half, um, three minor pieces developed, queen now developed. And now for some reason my opponent moves his king to a d7. Um, is he worried about... I don't know. What's he worried about? I, that move I just don't get at all. Anyway, so knight out here. Maybe it's a mouse slip. Now he develops his bishop. So, king's in the middle of the board. What I want to do is get castled and then just try and bust open all around here. Right? Very simple. Blunt. Straightforward. Okay, come in here. Block with a knight. King now goes back to e8. Must have been a mouse slip of some kind. And now it's time to go in for the kill. Okay, so he could castle. No, he can't castle. Right, He's going to have to move his king to defend the knight because the knight can't go there or there or there or there. So the knight has no squares. So either the king or the rook is going to have to defend. So he moves his king. Right, now what that means is that this knight is um, pinned. So first thing I do is castle. Next thing, I want to be lining up my rooks probably on these files, I would imagine. And, and use Freddy, use Gary, use Harry if need be, and just bust him open. Okay, so rook d to f1. Yep, line one up with the king. Very simple. Stick my knight into a nice pocket there, and we trade off knights, no problem. You know, moving pawns out of the way is all good. Um... Off goes Freddy. My opponent is now trying to launch some kind of uh, response down the queen side, but I'm unconcerned, right? I'm very happy about this pin knight. If I can get my pawn in here, the knight will fall. Okay, so what's he going to do? Is he going to trade? Yes, e takes, but now g takes. Okay, and you can see suddenly the king is becoming exposed. He pushes the pawn forward, but doesn't matter. F6 now, and this pin knight can do nothing. So the king now moves out of the way. I've got two options here, bishop takes or pawn takes. I take with a pawn. I have bishop and queen looking at this pawn. It's defended twice currently, right? Um, my light square bishop could come flying in. My queen could be involved and my rook. So you can see now all of my pieces now are starting to loom into my opponent's territory. So here, free pawn on h7. And now the rook is trapped. The rook can do nothing, okay? Pushes, I'm unconcerned. B3, 
right? And now what's he got? These pawns are blocked off, these pawns are blocked off. The only thing that can happen is this. My king's absolutely safe. That is not an effective um, pawn storm there at all. Okay, so grab the rook, why not? Okay, pushes another pawn. Bishop takes f7 check. King here. Another check with a bishop. Trade off. And that is the last move. Um, my opponent is forced to resign. He he's he can't move the king there or there. <coughs> or there. Or take there. So the only move is going to be this. I might then trade queens. Um, he's 10 materials down. Okay. Nice, nice win. Okay, game number two. And this time, it's Vienna. Vienna Gambit, and he plays the right move. D5. Takes, knight takes. Queen F3, the Paulson attack. Knight takes, knight B takes. Okay, I've seen this dozens of times. Now, bishop comes out to here. Now, very often with a Paulson attack, you do need to be careful not to play D4. D4 is a very tempting move. Um, but in this instance, if he throws his bishop out here, d4 is absolutely correct because it comes with tempo. He's going to have to move his bishop. Back goes the bishop. Okay. Now, bishop d3. Okay. So it's tempting to put your bishop here, but again, that just walks into c6. Same deal, you know. And I have to retreat. So here, and I'm looking up at this corner. Okay. My plan is going to be get my knight moved, castle my king, get my rook onto the semi-open f-file, and now, okay, here I spot a checkmate threat, okay, checkmate threats, super um, forcing, your opponent has to do something about it, so queen here, the threat is queen takes h7 checkmate, right, he's got to do something about it, what's he do? He's forced to weaken his pawn, all right, and now he's opened up lines on the dark squares, I still have both bishops, I'm very happy. So queen now has to retreat, can't go onto this diagonal, of course, or this diagonal. So queen now comes back. And you can see how many times, it's like a, you know, a lion that comes around sniffing around you know, your enclosure at night trying to find a way in. Right now, bishop flies into h6, attacking the rook. Very classic, rook moves. Queen now comes across, okay. Um, just trying to remember the point of that move. Maybe, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just making room for the knight so I can get my king castled, we shall see. Um, like we say, it's, you know, it's five minute blitz, so you're not gonna be playing perfect chess. Bishop is attacking this pawn and that would come with a fork on king and rook, so we wouldn't be happy about that. Okay, so knight e2 defends, c6, and now my bishop comes back, hitting my opponent's queen, right? My opponent is just not getting enough time to try and organize his own ideas. Queen comes down to here now, okay, and now, again, I'm on the front foot, right? I, I always wanted to get my bishop into here so that I can get my queen like this. That's the idea, right? Now my opponent brings his knight out. I do not want to lose my dark squared bishop. Why? Because these dark squares are so important around my opponent's king. So retreat the bishop. Now my opponent plays a, a, a decent sequence. This is, this is good stuff, right? Sacks the bishop, apparently. Now when I recapture, he then captures here. Now he's attacking the knight and also the rook behind it as well. Plus, with that queen here, I can't castle kingside. So that is quite unpleasant. So, knight comes back to here, hitting the queen, but I've missed the fact that the rook is there, okay? Now, fortunately, I have knight and bishop looking at this square. So I have a couple of options to block. I want to keep my bishop here, where it can get in somehow, okay? But I'm now pretty much a rook down. Okay, knight grabs pawn, attacking my other bishop. Not to worry, castle. Okay, we're both down under three minutes, so there is time on the clock, right? And it's a question of, can you get in? Who can who can deal the killer blow, right? So we have a queen check, king, king just moves. All right, and now knight comes in, takes bishop, knight takes knight. 
Okay. So basically here I'm down an exchange, uh, pretty much, and some pawns. Yeah, quite a few pawns. So now b6. This to me seems maybe a little on the slow side. Um, I mean, what my opponent really wants to be doing now is to force exchanges um, and really bring these rooks into the game. But uh, Okay, so now again you can see bishop here. And this is doing two things. It's controlling these dark squares, but it's also hitting the queen. So the queen has to move. Right, do we want to trade queens? Absolutely not. Queen dodges. Queen comes in, threatening checkmate on the next move. Okay, so what would you play here? King g1, just defends. Queen now grabs a pawn. Okay. Now, again, my queen comes back. Again, I want to, you know, revisit this idea. There is nothing wrong. There is no shame in just knocking and knocking at the door. When you've got a good attacking possibility, use it. Okay, another pawn push, arguably too slow. Now I bring my knight in, kind of hitting the bishop. Also maybe thinking about opening things up around the king. I've got to do something, right? If we get into a war of attrition, I'm going to lose. But my opponent here also is down on time. He's now done, down under one minute. I've got nearly two minutes. Okay, queen here. So what am I threatening? Queen there and it's unstoppable mate, I think, right? So is h5 forced? h5 is played. Okay, and now <coughs> we actually have uh, checkmate in the next four moves. Okay, and it starts with queen g5, right? So I'm, I'm, again, I'm just threatening to come dodging behind the behind the pawn, right? It's not it's not pretty, it's not elegant, but it's effective. I think you should place king here now. I think that's forced. Yeah, pretty much forced. And now knight takes h5. Okay, pawn can't recapture because queen here is mate, right? So he brings his rook across to try and help. And the knight simply moves out of the way again. What am I threatening? Again, queen here, actually checkmate, right? Now my opponent plays d3, too late. Queen h4 is checkmate. Blunt, right? Ugly, it ain't pretty, but it's effective. There you go. Right, game number three. <coughs> and we have a Sicilian. So the Sicilian wing gambit takes a3. Uh, he declines the second pawn, probably wise, and instead pushes e6. I grab the center. He comes in, and here I do push e5, right? You make life difficult for this guy. So he can't come out that way. What's he going to do? Knight out here. Now I grab the pawn because whichever way he takes, he's got two options. He's got knight, he's got bishop. Uh, whichever way I have c3. Bishop takes c3 with tempo. Now, I've got no development here, has to be said, right? My opponent does have to spend a move retreating his bishop. And now bishop comes out with a pin on the knight. Bishop breaks pin, knight f3. So now I'm starting to develop with some ideas. Okay, queen is attacking my undefended bishop. So drop it back again, d3, again looking at the h7 square. Pawn pushes, okay. That's fine by me. I figure if he wants to take here, I can take that with a knight. That all kind of makes sense. He does indeed take, I take back with a knight. Now, do we want to trade knights? He chooses not to. Um, I do have a bishop here, it's defended by knight and king, but I decide instead to engage my bishop, right? Maybe this knight wants to come around here. And we have castles. And now I take the knight, right? Okay, now, <coughs> I take knight. He takes knight. That is a kind of triangular um, uh, capture sequence. You have to be very careful, right? If, if you do a, a, re, a recapture kind of thing, you have to be sure, uh, and this this is actually quite common. Uh, there, there's if you look up the the triangular, just type in triangular, and do a search on that into my channel. You'll find a video on this because there is a very common pattern, like knight takes, bishop takes, and then knight comes back, right? Um, but here, this is just a mistake on my opponent's part, right? 
1350 rated. Okay, take, and now my piece that just captured the first piece captures again. And now, look, this bishop is looking evil, and look at this guy. Right, it's a great situation to be in. Plus, my opponent's queen is on the wrong side of the Massif Central in the middle of the board, right? Okay, so he thinks about trading off bishops. What do we do? We attack queen h5, right? What am I doing? I'm threatening for my queen to come in here. There, king, capture that one. It could all go horribly wrong. He pushes g6, okay? And now I simply capture with the bishop. And my opponent here is just forced to resign because um, if pawn takes, got queen takes, king has to go here. Well, no, in fact, uh, if pawn takes, that's checkmate because the king can't go in the corner because of the bishop, right? The queen's got these squares. Um, there's pretty much nothing else he can do because he's going to find himself checkmated very quickly. All right, let's go over to game number four and see what we get there. Here I've got the black pieces and we have d4, right? So I go into an Indian and it looks like we're going to have London, London time. All right, so King's Indian setup, d5, uh, kind of controlling the center. This knight wants to come in here probably at some point. Uh, I'd quite often play c5 here, um, but also I might want to put my knight here or here to protect this square from his knight. But anyway, we have c3. So he's just following his London setup. Um, my knight now comes out to c6. Bishop develops. This is all, you know, perfectly normal London system, okay, on his side of the board. And now h3, right? Slightly dubious, maybe. Um, he wasn't forced to move his pawn there. You know, you have to ask yourself, okay, if this bishop comes out with a pin, is it the end of the world? You know, how bad is that? Yes, the knight's kind of pinned, but he could, for example, move this knight to here, and then the queen is free to come out, you know? So, and that, and that comes with development. This is not a development move, right? That's a, a weakening move. So now I go in for the kill. I'm in a killing mood, right? Knight comes in there. Queen now moves. F5. So I'm really staking my claim on the center of the board here. Now white castles short and kind of exposing this weakness as well to some degree. I play my queen across to e8. This is a move that I think is quite familiar from the Dutch. But maybe might have ideas at some point about throwing in e5 and trying to compete for that because I've got knight and bishop and then queen looking at that square. We have rook across. Um, now here I also noticed that I've got a hanging pawn, but my opponent misses this one, okay? So I rewrote my knight around. I'm, I'm trying to find out where does this knight belong on the board, and I'm not quite sure at this point. Um, so we have a trade of bishop for knight in the middle of the board. I've got a couple of options here. I decide to recapture with the f pawn, right, which is towards the center. Um, kind of blocks up the center, but crucially opens up the f file and that will come in handy now his knight is obviously under attack has to retreat okay um now e5 finally this this main pawn break takes 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 and takes right so now again we're in a situation where my opponent's queen is kind of on the wrong side of the board right these two pieces haven't developed okay so now i want to go in Okay, so queen comes to here, yeah. So she's looking at this pawn, looking at this pawn. They're both defended right now. So my queen comes across to the g file in line with my opponent's king. What's the plan? The plan is bishop takes h3, okay? Because this pawn is pinned, right? So it cannot defend, it cannot recapture on h3. Does my opponent see this? No, my opponent does not. <coughs> so bishop takes h3. Now, here I've got the feeling that there should have been a quick finish, but I didn't find it. Uh, so, Rook is forced to come back and defend the pawn. 
So obviously I, I can't take with a bishop now or, or with a queen, but I can take with the pawn or potentially with the rook. Now, I took with a rook thinking, hey, hey, aren't I clever? Because this pinned pawn now can't take. But what I missed was knight can. However, then I have e takes, right? This pawn is still super pinned and my pawn is attacking both of those pieces. Now rook to here. Now there may have been a better solution. Also notice my knight is still defending that pawn. My queen is still defending that pawn. So I'm, I'm managing to hold my defense together even while kind of kicking seven shades of Shinola out of my opponent. So bishop takes here and obviously, you know, the threat is the bishop moves with a discovery. Bishop moves with a discovery. King can't go to here. Yeah, so is going to have to move to the H file. Now what I'd want to do is something like this, but uh, my bishop's under attack. So bishop now to g2, where it's paired up with the pawn. Okay, and now the king moves back, but the, the king from here doesn't have any, oh, he, he can't move here anyway. He's only actually got two squares, two legal squares. So now my queen wants to come in and checkmate the king there. Okay, so, Queen takes pawn now with uh, check. Knight blocks, and this is important, okay? Now, if I'd have gone, for example, you know, here, then black, uh, sorry, white still has options for checking my king, right? But with knight there, there's no more checks, right? He can't, he can't take the knight, and he can't come onto the back rank, okay? And that's important. And remember, um, also my opponent's down to a minute here. So here we have rook takes pawn, bishop takes, queen takes, okay? Um, so in actual fact, materially, I'm up one pawn, but in terms of king safety, you know, look, look where his pawns are, right? His pawns are over here, his king's all the way over here, okay? My king has some security, and this rook still hasn't moved, nor is mine. Okay, so check. My opponent's down to 37 seconds. King moves. Rook f8. Clear threat. Discovered attack with pin on the queen. Okay, so the king has to move. Queen across with check. Again. Bang. Again. Rook in line with the king. So this knight is pinned. Okay. Just makes a move. Queen comes in for the kill. Rook here. And that is checkmate. Okay. So there you go, quite, quite satisfying there. Might be worth analyzing that game to see if there was a better, uh, a more crushing win. Okay, and this is a really nice one with a lovely checkmate in it. All right, so I'm black again, and we have the Scandi. Scandily dressed. Okay, e takes d5, knight f6, the modern, and the very nice c4 on move three. And this leads to the Icelandic palm gambit with e6, and if pawn takes e6, bishop takes e6, okay? And you've, you've got a load of ideas. In fact, I'm, I'm really gonna delve into this a bit more because you do get this position quite often at the intermediate level. Uh, c, c4 is not the best move, d4 is, is definitely better. Okay, but the idea here is, at some point, get the queen behind the bishop. If bishop takes here, however your opponent blocks, you can remove that piece and Lots, well, there's lots of interesting attacking ideas anyway. So we have knight f3, okay, so that's one piece that's no longer defending that square. Uh, bishop flies out, d4 hits the bishop, okay. Now we've got ideas, <coughs> excuse me. So throw in a check, how is he gonna block? Block to the bishop, all right. So now queen e7, this is the move, right? Now, if bishop takes, we can recapture with a queen, but also we're threatening this discovery with check. So the knight comes in to block. Right now, I play knight d7, okay? Always looking to develop, right? Look at my development, one, two, three, four, five, with the queen, and I'm ready to castle, okay? I've got five pieces out on the board. My opponent has two, right? He's really behind in development. And that's what you get with gambits, and you have to jump on it. Okay, so 
bishop blocks here. So clearly if knight had taken here, I have like bishop takes with check, recapture the knight. Um, so now again, front foot chess, I'm moving forward. This bishop is pinned, right? Could capture here still, um, but we have knight c3. So now this is like everyone's pointing the guns at everyone else. This is great. This is a Tarantino scene. Okay, now I capture the bishop. Only way to recapture is queen, right? Now knight takes knight, pawn takes, and now rook d8, okay? Still keeping on the front foot, still trying to create problems for my opponent. Queen dodges out of the way, and I castle. Okay, white now castles. And c5 here stops this pawn from advancing, which is going to restrict the movements of his light squared bishop to some extent. Okay, his knight is now no longer pinned also. He comes in, attacks my bishop. I retreat. He comes in again. I retreat again. So this is not a fantastic place for my bishop to be. Uh, maybe that would have been a better move, because then at least I'm attacking this uh, loose pawn. But he pushes his bishop again. Sorry, his, his, uh, his b-pawn. And now queen to here. Okay. And we're going to have mate in a few moves. Rook moves. Right. Bishop comes in. Obviously, the reason why the rook is moving is because of this threat. Okay. Um, and if you push g3, which is pretty much forced, bishop would take the rook. Okay. Now, g3 is the pretty much the only way to defend mate. I think actually bishop there might have been also pretty useful. Yeah, that, that might have worked. Also, knight here. Oh, no, that doesn't defend that pawn. Okay, anyway. Also, notice I have a bishop lined up with the king as well. Pawn pushes. Rook, e, rook f to e8. Okay, I'm just looking at piling up. You know, I, sometimes it's really just a question of getting as many pieces as you can lined up with the action area, right? Okay, now knight comes in attacking my bishop. All right, now, what would you play in this situation? So I had a bit of a think, 13 seconds on this move. I'm down under two minutes, my opponent's on three minutes. And what I decide is to sack the exchange because that means this pawn recaptures. And when that pawn moves, you see the situation? What's bad? That's bad. That bishop is bad, right? I really want to play this, but I can't. Now my opponent gives me an opportunity. Rook takes, pawn takes, right? Queen up here now. So yeah, I'm looking at this rook. Potentially I'm looking at that. It means this rook can't move because it's required to defend the bishop. Rook comes up here and now simple c4. And now this pawn here is pinned, okay? And I've just got threats coming from all over. I'm behind in material, but it doesn't matter. All right, queen grabs pawn. Okay. Now, what would you play here? And this is this is a really, really lovely finish. I have to say, I'm super proud of this. But checkmate into forced. Okay. Pretty sure it's forced anyway. Bishop takes f2 check. Right, now, the king has one option. Go in the corner or take the bishop. Okay, can't go here, can't go here because of my bishop, right? King takes bishop and now, can you see it? The final move, queen e3 is actually checkmate, okay? Got bishop there, queen there, queen's covering that. It's a lovely, lovely checkmate. Now, if the king, let's just figure this out. If the king had gone there, um... Yeah, I'm not quite sure how it would have continued from that point. Um, I mean, this would have forced an exchange of queens. And then you've got to be very careful about the back rank mate, but I think that would probably have been best. Let's just do a quick check of this, this one finish on here, because I would be interested to know um, if that actually counts as a blunder on my opponent's part or whether he could have survived in some way. <coughs> <clears throat> this is where we learn, right? 
playing games is all great, but um, you know every game's got a lesson in it somewhere. So just make sure you you get the lessons, right? There's free lessons. Why not? Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed these uh, examples of of nice attacking games. It's definitely the style that that I personally really want to develop um, and to work on because it's simply just more fun than just being a you know very good solid chess player. But the, the bottom line is, to be a really good chess player, you've got to be able to attack. Anyway, right? Spotting those attacks, spotting those mating opportunities, it's all really, really good stuff. Okay, now here we have, it has come up. So here it's got white, yeah, definitely. What was that, mating what? No, I don't know. Okay, so here, white is winning. <coughs> this rook move is a blunder. C4 is a mistake. I missed an opportunity to attack a piece that can't escape. From here. That. It wants me to play this. Hang on. Okay, so what's the best move here? Okay. But... Hey ho. So, but I play, I play this, and then queen takes is a blunder. Leads to losing material. Bishop takes f2 is brilliant. That's not an easy move to find. King takes, yeah, is a blunder because mate in one. Now, the best move would have been king into the corner. Okay, and let's see the line from there. How would it continue? Take the rook. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. And um, yeah, a nice dominant position there. Material's actually equal, but this bishop is just so, so threatening. You know, um, I've got a barrage against this bishop as well. Rook comes here. I don't know, queen there. It's, it's all going to end very, very soon, I'm sure. So yeah, very interesting. Anyway, so there you go. Um, nice little uh, lesson in that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the attacking stuff. If you like it, let me know in the comments. Um, but I'm going to keep trying to play this kind of chess because it's what I enjoy. So there you go. Thanks for watching. See you later.